Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is the third and final part of our Blower Door Basics series, where we take a look at the results and break down what we discovered about this home. Before we begin, let's look at the physics behind a blower door test. When we run a blower door test, air from inside the home is pushed out by the fan, creating a pressure differential between the inside and outside environments. In its natural state, the pressure inside a home is the same as it is outside, right around atmospheric pressure, depending on elevation and the weather. The pressure drops as air exits the front door. We call this negative pressure inside the home depressurization. In weatherization, we typically use a blower door to depressurize a home by 50 pascals, hence the negative 50 we see on a manometer. At negative 50 pascals, we create an environment that is equivalent to a 20 mile per hour wind acting upon the home from all directions. Air wants to enter the home to equalize the pressures of the outside and inside environments. But instead of a natural wind pushing air inside the home, we are essentially using depressurization inside the home to suck air in through gaps in windows, pipe penetrations, improperly sealed doors and leaky flue dampeners. These are the penetrations and gaps we look for when evaluating a home for air sealing measures. So we've got our numbers. Uh, we walked around the house and we noted all the different air sealing uh, spots there. And, and it's important to keep in mind that, that if we were doing an actual audit, we would have either been marking those areas down as the auditor, or in many cases, doing the air sealing as we go. It's a great technique to run the blower door while you're air sealing to ensure you don't get things too tight. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the numbers and see what we've got. Based on the measurements we took, we came out with a home uh, volume of 15,600 cubic feet. Now with our blower door reading at 50 pascals, I called that about 2,100 CFM. 2,100 cubic feet per minute times 60 minutes, and we get 126,000 cubic feet each hour. Now we take that and we divide that by the volume of our house, 15,600, and we're getting eight air changes per hour at 50 pascals. Every area has an N value to calculate out the amount of natural air changes meaning if there's no wind on your house, if you don't have a blower door set up and so on, that's how many air changes you get naturally. The in value for our area is 18.5. So I take this 18.5 and I bring it down here. I have eight air changes per hour at 50 pascals divided by our N value, which is 18.5, and I get 0.44 natural air changes per hour. Now the target here, uh, the tightest you really want to get a house, uh, at least based on our standards, is, uh, is about 0.35 air changes per hour. So uh, 0.44 is really not all that bad. Uh, we have a couple of other guidelines to follow, uh, that, that we have to follow as well. One is that we can never tighten a house uh, below 1200 CFM on our, on our blower door 50 reading. And we were getting 2100, so uh, we do have a little bit we can do on, on this house. Well, we're getting ready to wrap things up and head out of here. A couple of things to note and just to summarize what we found. Uh, we did find some areas where we could do some duct sealing. Found a major cavity uh, running down behind that water heater. Uh, we could feel all those things, and then when we broke out the, uh, the IR gun, we saw quite a bit of uh, air leakage around some of these penetrations. What we didn't find, air leakage around uh, the plumbing penetrations and some of these other common areas which uh, you may find in your homes. Now the next step before we get out of here is to make sure we return things to the way that we found them. If we walked into this home in the middle of winter and we had to turn off uh, any of the combustion appliances such as a furnace or a boiler, want to make sure that we turn those back on so we don't have frozen pipes or uh, even worse, frozen people. So I opened, uh, or closed up rather, some windows. I'm gonna go ahead and open those back up and we'll get on out of here.
Today in Ben's Toolbox, we'll be taking a look at a few of the tools that you saw me using throughout the blower door process. Uh, the first one was uh, measuring devices. And uh, you noticed I was using just a standard tape measure. I still prefer using that, but of course there are other options available. Here's a, uh, a laser tape. You better uh, watch your eyes there. And uh, obviously you just point that uh, beam at what you're wanting to measure bounces back and gives you a reading as to how far out that is. Would have been very handy on those vaulted ceilings you saw me uh, working on there. So the uh, other items that we had then, you saw me using some smoke puffers. I was using an acid-based one. That's just one category. We also have some of the uh, other ones here. We got the silica-based. So that can make a bit of smoke. We've got uh, lightables. Of course, those can be handy in some cases, and a lot of folks are using the, uh, the liquid-based ones. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look at how some of these work. The first one that you saw me using, the acid one, that's just a chemical reaction that takes place when it hits the air. The silica one, you just shake it up basically, open up the top, and, uh, and that'll puff out a bit there. You can see a bit of smoke coming out there. So the lightables are uh, just how they sound, you either light the end of this here or one of these uh, smoke matches. We can light one up and show you. Oh, there it goes. And the, uh, the liquid ones just rely on a little uh, battery powered heating element. Uh, you can see here as we, uh, as the light to show it going. And of course that's going out the top and if you want to direct that a bit, uh, it comes with a little fan to uh, direct that puff of smoke exactly where you want it to go. So you saw me using a couple of these and thanks to some viewer feedback suggesting we show some other options, uh, we just thought we'd pass that along. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. This was just the perfect house to feature for our blower door basics. Not only did those vaulted ceilings give us a bit of a brush up on our math when we're calculating out the volume of the house, but we also found air leakage in some places we didn't expect. Some of the common areas like plumbing penetrations under sinks and the windows, we really didn't find a lot there. But we did find an enormous cavity behind that uh, water heater we wouldn't have found without the use of the blower door, as well as some leakage coming out of those uh, ceilings with the use of the IR. Uh, we discovered that. I know I enjoyed doing this one. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.